Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this summer lake scene. It's very simple. Um, it's painted in the loose style and I'm using my Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. It's a quarter imperial sheet and it's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees so that gravity can help the paint flow beautifully. I'm just loosely penciling in a couple of hills, a position for my trees and the sort of um, the shape of the of the lake bank across the left. Just loosely roughing in some guidelines so that I can sort of see where to go when I paint. I'm going to start off painting the sky using the wet in wet technique. So I'm using my large bamboo haki brush to wet the sky all over. I'm thoroughly wetting the sky area and then I'll bring some water down across the foreground um, to wet that, but not quite as thoroughly, um, just because I'll be trying to get my, my lake in at the same time as my sky. I'm starting off with a pale mixture of yellow ochre um, across the middle of the sky, just a few streaks with some white paper between those streaks. Um, and then I'm going to use cerulean blue, very thick, straight from the tube, and I'm going to sweep it across the top of the page and then move the brush from side to side, uh, just smoothing the top out um, and then carefully and lightly bringing in some paler blue across the bottom area. I'm using both the whole of the hairs of the brush and the tips of the brush just to change up the amount of paint that I put into the sky. So I've got nice wide sweeps across the top and then narrower sweeps of blue across the bottom. I'm hoping that it will diffuse out quite nicely just to give me that look of feathery um, blue sky with little bits of cloud in the distance. Using the Harky brush now just to skim across some of the blue paint across where I'm going to have my lake so that that can just diffuse softly while the paper's all wet. Now there's a bead of water formed above my hills, so I'm just taking that off with a clean, damp brush to stop it from running down my page and to keep that horizon line nice and clean. And now I'm going to just turn my board around 90 degrees, um, just so that the flow of water runs across the page rather than um, running down. I'm just going to very lightly smooth out um, the paint a little bit, just with the tips of the brush, just here and there, just to sort of bring it across a bit more evenly. I want this to be a very quiet, gentle sky, nice sort of summer sky, just with a trace of clouds. Now I've got it where I want it, so I'm just going to flatten it and then using a clean damp brush, um, it's a small flat brush and I'm just pulling the brush lightly through the damp paint, just bringing up some smaller feathery streaks, which should just diffuse very, very softly. So I wasn't adding any paint there, I was just moving the paint around that's already in the sky. Now I'm leaving it to completely dry. The sky is now completely dry, so I'm going to mix up the two colours that I use for the sky. That's um, yellow ochre and cerulean blue. And I'm going to sweep across where I've penciled in my distant hill. Just keeping it quite nice and narrow. As you can see, the paint's quite pale and transparent because the hill is in the distance. Now I've got some perylene green on the tips of my brush and I'm just dotting across the top of the hill in places just to give the look of distant trees and bushes on the top of that hill. They should just soften into the damp paint 
of the hill quite gently but because they I'm using thicker drier paint there they should just stay there and not diffuse out too much. Now a slightly different shade of green for this hill here a little bit more yellow ochre in it and then using horizontal sweeps of the Harky brush I'm just pulling it across unevenly just to create the land and the edge of the lake. Just going to soften the bottom of the hill using um, a damp squirrel mop brush and a little bit of sepia just to bring in a little bit of pale brown distant tone. And I'm bringing that pale mixture of sepia round into the green grass and foreground landscape around the edge of the lake just to add a bit of variety to the tone. And now with my flat brush, I'm just feathering the join between the lakeside and the far bank. I've dipped into some fairly strong Payne's Grey. It's dry enough so that it will sit on the edge of the lake side. Um, just to add some nice dark shadows and I'm dotting that in here and there and just starting to create some shadows and some more defined edges to the lake and the land. I'm dotting it into um, the wet grassy area as well and that will diffuse and soften back a bit and give me more texture and more variety of, of, of hues. I'm trying to be quite delicate here because I don't want to outline the lake. I want to have shadow in quite a lot of places, but I want it to be sort of unevenly placed and um, fairly sort of random. And so now I'm going to soften the Payne's Grey a bit here and there and add some sepia in the same way. It's quite a rich mixture of paint and just on the tips of the flat brush, I'm just touching it in here and there just to add some variety to the dark so it's not all Payne's Grey. And now with some nice dark Payne's Grey just across the very bottom corner I'm going to darken it up quite a lot and put in some richer thicker paint uh, so that I can use the corner of a plastic store card just to pull up some sort of texture and grasses through the bottom. And also it's nice to have it a little bit darker along that bottom edge. It helps to bring the painting together and sort of balance the composition out a bit. It sort of brings the foreground forward. I'm just putting in all those sort of random grasses, sticks, twigs, weeds, just suggestions um, in the foreground. Now I've washed out my flat brush and um, I've dried it mostly, so it's just damp and I'm just feathering it out horizontally and gently through the lake banks a little bit, just to soften in places and to drag a little tiny bit of paint um, into the water in certain parts. Now I've washed out my brush again um, and just taken off all the surplus water and I'm dragging it carefully and horizontally through the water um, to lift out some of the paint so I can get a, a nice white sort of um, reflection or ripple mark. I'm going to pull a tissue across that brush stroke just to make sure that the paint comes out and I've got that nice soft pale line. I think I'm going to do one more across the water. Just cleaning out my brush and then drying it off mostly so it's just damp, pulling it horizontally through and then wiping 
swiftly back with a tissue. And now I'm just going to leave everything to dry and I'll come back and finish off the painting. It's all nice and dry, so I'm going to just come in and do some finishing details. Firstly, I'm going to paint in a couple of trees on the left bank. So I'm using a mixture of sepia and Payne's grey and my number three um, graduate De La Rowney rigger. And I'm just going to pull up the shape of some trunks and the lower branches. I don't think I'm going to need to go quite as high as the mark that I'd penciled in originally. I think that's the thing. When you're painting a loose painting, very often um, the painting will get to a point where it sort of takes a life of its own um, and maybe things that you'd planned you don't need or you just need to change slightly. So. I'm just going to make these trees slightly lower because I think they'll balance out better with the, the way the composition has kind of uh, panned out as I've painted. I'm now going to mix up some pa palish green from my yellow ochre and my cerulean blue and I'm using a small um, Pro Art Ron Ranson Harkey brush just to dot in um, some foliage across the tops of the branches. And now I've added some perylene green to the tips of my brush and I'm just going to dot that in using the corner and the edges or the tips of the brush here and there just to darken up the foliage a little bit. I want this to be quite light foliage, nice and summery, so I'm not going to put too much dark in. And then just back to the rigger and a few more branches. Just pull the branches up into the canopies a bit in places and maybe pull out an extra few here and there. Just going to put in a slightly smaller tree just at the base there. And then go back in with the small harky brush and just dot in a little bit more foliage, leaving plenty of the sky showing through, just dry brushing around the edges. going to put a bit of the green into the foreground as well. If you are a bit heavy handed like me you can just dab out a little tiny bit of the green paint uh, with a tissue and just go back in slightly lighter just making sure you leave enough of those sort of air spaces. Now this is perylene green again. On the tips of the small harky brush, I'm just going to run it across the far side of the lake, um, just for some bushes and trees. Darken up a little bit underneath with some Payne's gray as well. Just keeping it very, very loose, just, just a suggestion of the undergrowth there. This is a very simple, loose painting. We don't need too much detail. Just a few more dots, sort of some loose leaves just around the edge. Now I'm going through the wet paint with the corner of my plastic store card just to put in or well, scrape out some branches, sticks and twigs, that sort of thing. Just pulling them through the trunks as well as the foliage uh, just to add a bit more texture and just to bring a bit more body to that area. 
In some places it lifts the paint, in others it pulls a bit of paint across in, in a line. So it can, can be a very effective technique once you get used to using this um, card scraping technique for trees. It's nearly finished, but I think I'm just going to dot in a little bit of yellow ochre just here and there just to bring a little bit more colour to the lake edges, just to the banks here and there, a little bit under the tree. I don't want to overdo this, but I just want a little tiny few bright spots here and there amongst the suggestions of foliage. Just knocking it back again, dabbing with a tissue if it's gone on a little bit bright because yellow ochre can be quite a strong colour. And I think that's just about done. I'm just going to use the clean damp flat brush again just to sort of feather maybe some very pale marks from the bank into the water. Nothing much, just a, a tiny amount of um, blending in of those areas. Now you could, you could have some birds in this, they'd look really nice, but I think I'm just going to leave the painting nice and simple like this. I like the soft diffusion in the sky. There's a very pale glow and the mixture of the sky colours has made some lovely greens for the hills and the foliage. Um, with the addition, of course, of perylene green and Payne's grey, which has darkened things up nicely. I'm going to remove the tape now and have a look at it with its clean white border. I'm going to tear the tape away from the painting. Um, I don't want to run the risk of tearing the painting, so I'm pulling the, the tape away. This tape's quite good, it doesn't stick. So now you can see the finished painting and I think it's quite effective for something that's so simple. We've got the rolling downs in the background, um, the nice lake in the foreground with the tree, a little bit of bank, just the suggestion of some bushes here and there. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. Uh, please like, and if you haven't already, if, it would be lovely if you could subscribe and click on the bell icon and you'll be notified whenever I post videos. And thanks so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon. Take care, stay safe and happy painting. Bye.